Right now I'm going to demonstrate the functionality of the Weasties, our Max for Live Wiimote drum machine. The Weasties takes incoming MIDI and OSC messages from the Osculator software and uses them to control a drum rack in tandem with a few other Ableton stock devices. In this instance, I will be controlling a drum rack that's populated with samples from Nintendo's Super Smash Bros. Melee, which are available at soundsresource.com. First, we will need to sync a Wiimote to Osculator. Bluetooth will need to be enabled in order for your Wiimote to communicate with your computer. Launch the Osculator software and open the Weasties Osculator document. You will notice a gear-shaped icon in the top right of the main window. Click this icon to open the Parameters window. Now click the gear-shaped icon labeled Devices at the top left of the Parameters window. Navigate to and select the Wiimote option. Now click the Pair a Wiimote button found at the top of this page. Open up your Wiimote's battery compartment and press the small red Sync button. A unique 12-digit address will appear in your Wiimote's list. Press any button on the Wiimote to make sure it is paired and connected properly. You will see visual feedback from the Wiimote's control messages within the main Osculator window. If you're having trouble syncing your Wiimote to Osculator, please refer to the documentation that's available at osculator.net. With your Wiimote paired and active, launch the Weasties Ableton Live set. Be sure Osculator's track output is turned on in Ableton's MIDI preferences. Also make sure the Weasties device is synced to the same OSC port that Osculator is outputting from. To do this, return to Osculator and reopen the parameters window. Click the icon labeled OSC Routes. Here you can view and edit your list of OSC ports. The port number that is selected as Osculator's default needs to match the number shown in the Weasties. If these numbers do not match, simply type the correct number into the OSC port field in the Weasties device interface. You can now start playing with the Weasties. Each segment of the Wiimote's D-pad will trigger a sample in the drum rack. Press and hold a direction to hear a default 16th note roll. You can double that roll to a 32nd note by holding down the B button on the bottom of the Wiimote. To increase the roll to a 64th note, hold down the Z button on the front of the nunchuck. And hold down both the B and Z buttons simultaneously to increase the roll to a 128th note. Notice the B and Z buttons are controlling the synced rate parameter of Ableton's MIDI arpeggiator device. Also note that the arpeggiator is on its own dedicated MIDI track, which is receiving MIDI from Osculator. While this particular configuration isn't absolutely necessary, we do have our reasons. Aside from simply wanting to see each individual MIDI note in the clips we record using the Weasties, we also find it to be the most reliable way to get the most accurate playback of our performances. If desired, you can place the arpeggiator at the beginning of the Weasties device chain and configure the Weasties track to receive MIDI from Osculator, thereby eliminating the need for a separate MIDI track for the arpeggiator. Once you've made this change, hit the reset button in the bottom right of the Weasties interface. If you find no changes necessary, just be sure to maintain the track configuration present in this set. The arpeggiator's dedicated MIDI track must lie directly to the left of the Weasties' track in order for this instrument to function properly. Now, while triggering a sample, move the joystick on the nunchuck. The x-axis engages filtration, while the y-axis handles pitch shifting. This is the default behavior of the joystick. You can momentarily engage the joystick's secondary behaviors by holding down the C button on the nunchuck. While the C button is held down, you can scroll through the drum rack by moving the joystick to either the extreme left or right. Notice that this is actually controlling Ableton's stock MIDI pitch effect. It's in this way that you can effectively swap samples while performing. Likewise, while holding down the C button, you can navigate through the clip slots on the Weasties' track by moving the joystick to its most upward or downward positions. You can record MIDI clips by pressing the A button while Ableton's clock is running.
This action is synced to Ableton's bar. You can configure whether or not the length of each new clip is determined manually or automatically using the tab control in the center left of the Weasties interface. Clip lengths always occur in full bars regardless of the setting. If you're manually determining the length of the clip, you'll need to trigger the fire button once to begin recording and again in order to initiate clip playback. Keep in mind this process is synced to the downbeat of Ableton's clock, so you will need to trigger the fire button before the downbeat. If you're determining clip lengths automatically, simply select the desired number of measures in the drop-down menu to the right of the tab control. You will only need to trigger the fire button once to start recording. Playback engages automatically after the clip has reached its predetermined length. Double tap the A button to arm or disarm the Weasties' track. The first function of the Home button is to select and display the Weasties device if it is not selected or visible. When the Weasties is selected and displayed, the Home button toggles between the Clip and Tempo modes of the Minus and Plus buttons. In Clip mode, single tap the Minus button to delete the selected clip's automation. Double tap to delete the selected clip entirely. Single tap the plus button to toggle both the session record and automation arm buttons. This allows you to overdub MIDI notes and automation for the playing clip. The session record and automation arm buttons automatically switch off once your clip has completed one full loop of playback from its start position to its end position. Double tapping the plus button re-enables clip automation. This last feature is a failsafe in the case of accidentally disabling the playback of automation by inadvertently modulating a parameter. In tempo mode, the minus button will decrease Ableton's tempo. Single tap to decrease by 1 BPM per button press, or press and hold to continuously decrease the tempo. The plus button increases the tempo in the same way. The one button will start or stop the highlighted clip. Single tap the two button to start or stop live's clock. Double tapping the two button toggles Ableton's metronome. This project is a work in progress, and a use for the accelerometer and infrared data has yet to be determined. The patch itself is fairly well organized, legible, and labeled. We encourage you to modify this device to suit your tastes. Note that this device requires the OSC route max external object from SendMat. And while this object is embedded in the Weasties, it also comes pre-installed if you're using the latest version of Max. To check if the object is not installed, open up the context menu of the Weasties device and click Open Max Window. If you see an error message in the Max window reading OSC Route, no such object, you will need to download the OSC Route object. The easiest way to download this object would be through the Max environment itself. Open up a blank Max for Live device in Edit Mode. In the left bar of the Patcher window is a cube-shaped icon labeled Package Manager. Click the icon to launch the Package Manager. From here, you can search for and install the SendMat Max externals. Alternatively, you can also download the files from the SendMat website and manually place them in Max's packages directory.